yeah, we were just uh, still we were just in the in the room chatting and uh, sharing some ideas and hanging out and talking about certain things and just kind of how you know the onboarding mechanic and the onboarding tactics that we would, you know be able to use and just different things along that aspect as well as you know some of the things we still we're still continuing to uh, to find and unfold uh, as far as uh, you know funds moving around um, what exactly it means you know as far you know as PDI is like the uh, I know I talked about it last time the uh, NFTs that have been sitting and you know sitting around in LPs and just different aspects of it and uh, you know, who's who actually controls them you know is there actually value there you know was there scanning involved and it, it's clear that he he copied them at a certain time uh, for a certain reason uh, and then there is actual value and you know some of these some of these wallets are showing real value on the ethereum side but a lot of them are actually showing value on other chains so i literally had to make another way to look it up rather than eth so I saw that you know they had stuff in on Avalanche. There was value on Gnosis. Um, uh, there was value in you know liquidity pools on these other chains. Um, the arbitrage bots themselves are also going after centralized exchanges. I think that what he's trying to do is make sure that he can replace some of the value uh, before he starts. Uh, you know before the arbitrage bots still really start kicking in and. Or he, or he starts unwrapping uh, that liquidity that's sitting. Um, it seems to all be pretty much inside that inside one pool um, with that has a bunch of different copies in it. And it's as uh, as far as I can tell, it looks like it was the uh, the blast and spark contract that allows people. That's not even out yet. So like the ether die and the spark die contracts allow them to mint um, and lend and take out loans against it but their token literally is like fluctuates in value so you can give it you can send ethereum to it you can send died you can send a dollar to it so it's whatever they decide as a collateral and that's what they get back so the you know whoever's controlling that uh s die contract can control what uh what they use as the uh, actual backing of the asset which kind of explains the mismatching and uh, all the values being mismatched and uh, all the values being awkward. Um, but it also seems like it, it happened. They were doing this all right before the fork. And, you know, as of a few days ago, all these uh, transactions began occurring on these wallets. You know, funds were moving around. Like literally four days ago, they it, there was some NFTs that were, Look, they were like, looked like the scams, and then they turned into like uh, actually Lido stakes. So he had he had someone had wrapped staked Ethereum that they had put into the contract to take a, like to stake, and then uh, they got those NFTs and they took those NFTs and like they had wrapped them in a way to where the value wasn't what you know couldn't be seen, and uh, so there's definitely still quite a bit of value sitting inside Ethereum. And the way that, in my, the way that I see it is that they also have a ton of whatever they provided that liquidity with inside those contracts. So, like you know, how we are buying up a bunch of P die. There's there's wallets that have a bunch of P die. And say if we all had you know the exact copies of P die when it happened, and you get the inflated value of it, if you took all that value and sent it to burn or sent it to literally back or pretty much burn the PDI value down, there would be the exact, whatever they used to back it would be literally the amount that they could burn it down to. Um, so it could be a way in which they could, whatever assets that were put in these pools to back PDI could technically also be used as a way to mint value and burn down the supply because it would, Technically, whatever was backing was whatever was backing die at the time seems to have been literally sitting inside that pool. It, I, from what I had seen, there was about like 1.2 billion in in value. Like I took, I didn't, I didn't count up all the NFTs. I only counted up like wallets that value that I could see, and uh, 
I didn't count the hex either. There was like 500 million in hex in, in one of the wallets as well. So, and it's clearly, it seems like it was Maker, uh, MakerDAO, Spark, and Blast. Uh, like, that's what these, like, these fake, quote unquote, fake phishing contracts um, were at one time either Maker's, one of, like, Maker's mock contract. Uh, Spark is continuing to use these contracts. Um, and then Ave, of course, um, was another one that had some, uh, and you know imp implementation tokens so like they're like the way that their contracts written it's like you send in you know eth die or whatever and you get you know token a for the same value as whatever token b is so it's like a, it's a unique type of lending asset so it's not a stable asset uh, but it's just a, it's a token that follows the value of whatever tokens they decide to be as collateral and it's just awkward because that protocol is not even live yet like the, the Spark die uh, itself and the Ether die, which are supposed to follow that model, aren't even live uh, on uh, on ETH or anywhere else yet. Um, so it seems like they were either they were utilizing that that mechanic, that method to start you know backing up the value of die, you know, as with uh, real collateral rather than you know their fiat the fiat value of it, and then also seemingly knowing that the fork was going to happen might have been swapping value into these uh into these places to where whenever the copy happened they would have they would have the value they would have the well the token sitting over there that could technically burn supply down and then they would still have the value on eth to back it at the other side too um i don't know like i said i only went through a few Maybe I think it was nine or nine or ten uh, wallets, but again, it seems like they're all inside that one that one pool, and uh, it's definitely on more than just Ethereum uh, Ethereum's blockchain. So yeah, it's definitely interesting. I know that we're always finding out things every day, and you know, um, I think Spark and Blast and you know Pulse have a they have a huge role to play together. Like I don't know if they're all going to be working on the same chain or do anything like that. But I think that they all kind of have the same narrative of, you know, being able to build their own blockchains and kind of, you know, have their own independent, um, independent structure and independent communities, um, rather than, you know, with, with Ethereum getting the ETF. I mean, if you're someone that has billions and billions of dollars on a chain that is, is technically about to get grifted by the government, I think, um, that would be there, you know, I can't think like a billionaire cause I'm not one, but, uh, if I try to, I think that would be a move, you know, um, spend, spend a couple of years building a community and then, you know, be able to play the narrative of, Oh, the gas is so high. You know, I, I think that really was that, that was a, that was definitely part of it, but I don't, I think the overall vision was eventually to, to build a community through trust and then literally have a blockchain with a community that would see value in what he was doing. And because without a community and a, you know, rather large one, you're, he's just going to be holding a bunch of tokens that, you know, are valueless. You know, people aren't interacting with the chain and people aren't utilizing the chain. Um, there's no value there. So by bootstrapping and bringing on a community, it seems like that was the, uh, I mean, cause some of these liquidity pools that he had made had been pretty old, you know, and, uh, <laughs> even some of the maker liquidity pools, but they, again, he could have just been providing liquidity for a long time and, you know, just eventually, you know, knew that he was going to copy it. And then it's like understood that if he sat there long enough that he'd be able to bring that value over. And, uh, seemingly whenever he decides or whenever they decide, that's whenever we're going to see it. Yeah. Vice. Yeah. If anyone has any questions or anything like that, feel free to speak. I just let you, uh, just got you, called you up to here. Saw you asking to speak so go ahead man if you have a question go ahead hey can uh um so i'm wondering how we can bridge between chains and i'm trying to fork front ends and back ends and shit like that and i was wondering if anybody here could help with that process uh, yeah, like, do you, do you want to do you want to spin off like your own version of like like a 
live version of it just so you can like a test net version of it we can test it and then deploy on mainnet if, if that's what it takes um, yeah, there's a lot of money involved and I feel like we should you know work together as communities and reach out and all work together you know that's how these things happen 100% yeah yeah absolutely dude um, uh, I know that, for that reason yeah that's uh, that's that's what Paul Stain's all about man it's the, the you know it's being able to permission this chain literally yeah dude 100% dude yeah you're definitely in the right place man I don't know if you've ever but yeah I'm uh there's some I, there's some people I can get you connected with and I mean I could help you out some I don't I mean I don't consider myself a dev. I'm just really good at control C and control V and following instructions. <laughs> oh, uh, freaking all, bro. <laughs> so I'm not going to sit here and uh, grift and pretend like I know what I mean, that I know how to do everything. But I mean, I do know how to do some things. But yeah, man, uh, I'll definitely uh, shoot some documents. I mean, some stuff your way and get you connected with some some people. You do you have a telegram? I do. I, I mean, uh, cool, you can join the one here that I got in my profile or we can work together in another one privately oh work yeah oh, man yeah i have a group as well it's just literally pulse chain trends on uh in there but yeah man there's Appreciate other shit there's, you big dog yeah, yeah man there's some other guys in here like uh good old sunny he's a legend of he's, he's another i'm uh dude that's been launching and following some of the some of the narratives and some of the things that we've uh uncovered over time and understanding that how you know just how awesome this community is and just uh, the value it is that <laughs> how valuable value it is in the community. community that's it. That's all. If we all work together yeah. towards the same vision. We'll make it a hundred percent. Yeah, I think that's the difference between Pulse Chain and everything else is that it's not. It doesn't have to be PVP, uh, yeah, like BS. Yeah. Like during, during the bull run of BSC, it was just like people were attacking each other's swaps. They were like literally going into liquidity pools and flooding it with cake, forcing people not to be able to buy with with B and B. Like I saw, we saw it all, and then being able to come to a, a chain like this where people are literally giving each other, you know, supply and then burning it, and uh, you know, as they bring in liquidity and just uh, people are taking the initiative to learn the yeah. system here, and it works across every other EVM chain just like it does yeah. both chain. Yeah, I mean, um, if you guys really put your put your mind and effort into just building out this whole thing. I mean, I, I see like, a lot of people put liquidity down for tokens, like between other tokens, create their own tokens, which is good. Yeah, and that's a good sign. People want to get in the industry. But what needs to be done is figuring out oh, there's how gaps. to get snaps. Yeah. 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 There's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's gaps to be filled. And then uh, for sure. Gaps and gaps. gaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure, there was definitely, but I mean, it's it's pretty awesome. Like some of the stuff that's already been built got built pretty quickly. I mean, there was a, you know, balancer fork pretty quickly. They had you know a way to short, uh, long, um, different leverage. Uh, you know, there was definitely some things that came out relatively quickly. Um, but yeah, there's still a lot of holes. But that's the great thing about Pulse Chain too is that you're not like on Ethereum. If you're trying to deploy on Ethereum or Solana, you know, it's already got the same things over and over, rebuilt over and over so many times that it's just it's kind of uh, <clears throat> it's just oversaturated with uh, opportunity, you know. Same thing with the, the price of ETH, of the ETH itself, right? It's like it's once you've got that thick of liquidity, you know, it can only do so many X's, and the opportunity gets so can only get so you know gets less and less over time. That's one thing that uh, Richard has always kind of stressed yeah, and always, dude, I envision, always pushed. <clears throat> I envision a cross-chain app that works on every fucking chain. And it was, uh, does everything. Yeah. Like it's all one platform. Chain, you can have it on yeah. your iPhone. Yeah, chain, chain, chain Link is working on something called CCIP, which is going to allow cross chain de decentralized applications. I don't know when it's going to come out. I do I also know that uh, Neon uh, has allowed and has built a, uh, a way for people to build EVMs and EVM compatible shafts sure. on, on Solana as well. So, like, the, some of the stuff is already here. But yeah, I know. Once they come up with the, the CCIP, which is pretty much the, like the underlying internet itself runs off TCIP. So like the, you just imagine like back in the day whenever you had Gmail and it couldn't, could, couldn't speak with Yahoo. Uh, so what they're going to, it's kind of like how blockchains are right now. But as soon as they're able to get that underlying technology finished, you know, that's what's going to be able to help these things all 
interact and you know pair You're between you know this how I'm <laughs> seeing this bro like you you got more information than I do on this whole thing like dude, we gotta work bro <laughs> I've been a uh, I'm a uh, I'm a dude that works in the oil field that just uh has a little bit of passion but yeah man we're always always talking about it just to, just the opportunity here right man I just I just know that people's lives will change and then the opportunity to see other people's lives change by default if i keep doing the right thing my life should change too so that's yeah. just the way that's I'm, just the way that i see it i'm having trouble like learning how to do like server javascript and all that i've got the smart contract part down it's just right I mean, i'm sure a lot of people do i mean it's easy have you done remember. have you have you ever have you ran through the eth scaffolding before eth scaffold so there's a there's a hold a little bit of it, it runs you through everything. It's like right there on uh, GitHub, where you can like literally download it, and it like it'll help you spin up uh, in a, like an exchange. It'll help you spin up uh, all that stuff. So you have to run through it like one time. It, I, I take I you tried that week or two. But I used Node.js and React, and I got like maybe I need to try the scaffolding you, thing. Yeah, you need visuals. That, like, uh, yeah, Visual yeah. Studios, Visual Studios, Docker. You know, uh, some form of you know uh, maybe a, a WSL like a Windows subsyst uh, subsystem with Linux, so you can also make the call up both commands if you need to. So you can call both sudo commands and uh, the other commands as well. So that yeah. might be a <clears throat> something you look into as well. Uh, that's what I that's what I've started using, and that's what's helped uh, propel me. Just I, I see a huge opportunity right now, and if we can connect Pulse Chain into this opportunity. I could see all of us here, you know, being aware of what's going on here. I mean, I, I see a huge opportunity, and I want to get it out to everybody. You know, I want it to benefit everybody. That's, That's it, man. I, yeah, the crazy thing about Pulse Chain is that uh, it's honestly, it's uh, it's the way that uh, it's it's built, and the way that it's uh, it's got the arbitrage bots and different things that are everyone's spinning up and running on it. Like you know, like this thing literally will mint volumes in and of it in, in and on itself and uh over time <clears throat> over time just uh by the arbitrage bots alone seeing value on this side because the the copies and the pairs that were copied over are just undervalued that uh over time so, it's gonna just it's gonna continue to do its thing and uh things will be an arbitrage a, a lot, right, right. Oh, it's, it's it's constantly arbitraging. That's why, like the the one like the one thing that we're calling out, right? The one thing that we've been, we've been watching is the coffee die, the the die coffee itself, which launched at less than a dollar. It's still like it's done a couple thousand of x, like like it's probably like a ten thousand x, and it Dude, still has another die, die p die, bro. And I was like, yeah, that's what we're talking about. That bag. Yeah. And I definitely yeah. doubled that bag many times. Yeah, so that's what, that's one of the big narratives that we have pushing. I believe that's probably going to end up being one of the biggest narratives, if not the biggest narrative uh, in so crypto. Can work, like, like what you're saying with PDI is we need to lock up PDI and we need to make it less available in the market, you know, like so that it matches the price of... Um, yep, yeah, so there's a, there's an entire PDI. ecosystem called, called a Tropa. I don't know if you mm -hmm. know what, what a tro. There's a tropa, and then uh, there's a couple other people. Like uh, like I said, Sonny, he has an entire ecosystem being built around the copies, which is okay. the you know the entire point of the the entire point of the ecosystems are to be able to provide passive rewards without necessarily ever having buyers or sellers. And then uh, yeah, there's a bunch. It's just super unique. Like in my opinion, like it's a a tropa itself is a, a maker DAO, like a decentralized maker DAO copy. It doesn't exactly work like MakerDAO, but he controls which direction those bots go. So, like through different liquidity ends and different um, tokenomics and different mechanics, he's created a a monetary, like literally a monetary theory of how fluid, like money, like money flows through an ecosystem. With like you know money mints, money mints at the Federal Reserve. You know whenever there's debt in this, you know debt in the system, it starts flowing a different way and it mints from another area. And right. like he's literally he's literally created a way to help once you know to help push PDI to where it needs to be pushed to, and then I believe once it reaches where it needs you know that dollar area, it's going to then you know kick on a, a whole another a whole another level, and as well as you know just people's consensus and uh, you know in general whenever people a big when a community believes that something is worth a dollar, uh, 
you know, then it's that's its value. You know, like when you walk to the you walk to the store to go buy some milk with a twenty dollar bill, you know, it's that that thing that piece of paper doesn't mean that it's twenty dollars. Just the fact that you are transacting with another human being at the store that believes that that is twenty dollars. So I think that's pretty much the same model that we have here, but we have it in a decent, you know, a way better unaffiliated and a decentralized model. You know, being able to build it from the ground up. There's no VCs here. That's why there. That's why there's gold. That's why there's gaps here, right? For whatever reason, and for good, in my opinion, the the VCs and the big guys they don't like Richard, so their money doesn't come here first. Eventually, their money will come, but it's going to be the first time, in my opinion, that we'll be able to sit around and laugh and dump on them, because <clears throat> they'll come, but they're going to come whenever we've already been sitting here for a while and being the and you know and, and, and building it up. <clears throat> so yeah, Rick, uh, go yeah. Uh, Talk about um, some of these collateral sources, like where, where this money is going to come be coming well, from. Send me the, so the smart SI, contracts um, of Atropa and the, the, the fishing those. contracts. How they're, they're they high send value. me the actual or send me the link or whatever on the pulse scan to where you see uh, Atropa because I haven't been able to find it. I don't think you, you have to like run a big pipe. Uh, compiler on it, I think, to be able to actually see what it's, uh, to see what the uh, utility and how it actually works. I don't, it's not verified. So it's, uh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. It is, but it is renounced. So it's not verified, but it is renounced. So nothing can so actually It's a renounced contract. So that means that the dev wallet cannot interact with that contract. As I know, correct. But because it is the renounced. system is set to work a certain way. Correct. And we just got no really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, you you have to verify a contract in order for it to be. Um, yes, but you can uh, you can verify it, and then you can literally yeah. There's ways to verify it without right, popping it up like, there and having it shown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Like he could do that at any moment. Whoever's running the show or whatever is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we'll see the contract. And, okay. I don't know if he'll ever show it, but yeah, he actually, he showed his face a couple of days ago. Uh, the guy that went by Maria, I think he found, he had doxxed himself. He's built a lot of trust within the community. Done a lot of uh, really unique things. But, uh, you know, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you just, you can't open source something until you verify it, basically. Like well, that is like, it. like, that, like, like, it's, it's the allure, it's the allure of not really knowing how it works. As, as doing well, people like, like early that believe basically. Yep, they yeah, those are the ones that are going to benefit the most because they trust what's going on, while everyone else is saying one thing or another and they're waiting for something. Those that believe that are willing to take the risk are the ones that benefit the most because you know that's the way I launch contracts too, right? Like I hold ninety percent of the supply. Everyone else that they're like they're never going to buy it, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, you burn. 80% of the supply, right? Then everyone else comes eighth again, but the people that got in earlier are the ones they're that benefit the most. Like big bread. Yeah. Yeah. So. But, uh, yeah, as far as the, the fishing contracts, well, like I said, some of them are fishing contracts. Some of them that I found were not. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely, the, the like, one of them that is literally named a fishing contract is the exact token that is the Blast token. That is literally the Blast rebase reward token. So, um it's clear that, that like that blast it's blast itself and what they're doing is not is not harmful um because that this is that their their chain itself works off of a rebasing mechanic where they rebase eth so when they're like providing rewards and the fact that they receive there's different tokens receive now <laughs> they receive different tokens that it just uh it's just it it flags it it flags it as a phishing thing because the way that they've uh, went back and they've wrapped the liquidity up and uh, and kind of moved it around in certain ways. Um, and then by wrapping it into like another type of NFT. Um, and then like today we saw it unwrapped. They saw one of those NFTs unwrap and it wasn't even the same name. And it was literally, and it was a Lido contract, you know, and if, if Lido thought that it was any, any harmful to their protocol, um, I think that they would have, they would have flagged, flagged it, it or they, they wouldn't have allowed it to uh, to continue to, you know, have that money moving around. So from what I could tell, there was a, uh, there's like a cut like called block, block sec. And a lot of these contracts were called in and just, they were, they were told to be flagged. 
So like you can run like a little program on their thing and you can literally like run a contract through it and it'll just give you a vulnerability score. And that's probably what they did without much research. Or uh, the other thing could be is that the people that designed this to be done this way called it in and got it to be flagged because they don't want that value to be lead, like whenever if, if it is planning to leave Ethereum, they don't want that value to then be dumped on the chart. This way they're able to technically keep the keep the value off Ethereum and uh, have it to where when they do decide to shift it over, that it you know no one is you know no one's harmed by it no no you know the, no, the ETH price isn't affected it's just kind of like a an on and off switch that'll happen from from the ETH pools to the uh, to, to the other pools there won't be any big dump on the ETH chart I mean we did see you know you know Richard pretty much bought the top uh, of ETH and I think you know that might have been for a reason I think that he was also using and being able to utilize the same functionalities of the contract that other people aren't allowed to yet because I believe that he just he has the ability he's an admin or he has admin rights to be able to use the SDI contract in ways that other people aren't which is why you can't see the SDI in his wallet when you look at it on a ether scan but you can go to Arkham and then you know sure enough it's sitting there um, hmm. so it's he's uh, he's he's you know so there's definitely ways um, for him to be able to do this and you know being able to implement and utilize that contract in a in a way to where you can literally take s die and then take a 20x leverage out against it a 20x leverage loan against s die and then send that out to the uh the r bots and then they don't make a trade that's you know unless it's going to make them money so if he only had a million dollars he's able to literally take a million leverage it to 20 and make you know 20x faster uh, just consolidate, uh, liquidate, so, 75x. It, yeah, it just seems like he's, he's trying to replace, the, before he even tries to take the value off ETH, he's going to try to replace the value, but because if he doesn't, and he just dumped the value on Pulse Chain, the ARB bots would still attack it, move it around, and uh, would still find fair value with it. They wouldn't, uh, just for yeah. Concern, yeah. so it's just like, He's got to be able to, uh, I believe, you know, if he's going to do it, he's got to make sure he dumps it in the right liquidity pools at the right time. <laughs> but I, still, I, I, th I think I think it's going to be more of a slow go. It's not just going to be a one, two, three, all of a sudden it's it's pegged type thing. It, I think these things are just going to going to unlock over time. But he could, he could though, he could, he could. I mean, he's got six hundred million. Bars, bro, like just been got like, bars for days. I swear. Yeah, like, kind of how I do it. But uh, yeah, he's. He's got, he's got around four hundred million to six hundred million dollars that we know that he has, and then another, you know, the money that that's sitting inside that liquidity pool. So yeah, man, definitely exciting times. Um, uh, bro, yeah. that's that's so lit, bro. You have no idea, like just too lit. Just I'm fucking bro, I'm just hard, bro. been looking at it far too long. I know, right? I Holonomics. Like I do. I do. Holonomics. Yeah. yeah. Hoddle, the boy. So you were saying like you got the connections for the front ends, back ends, and and shit like that. I mean, if if you could really send me a DM. Yeah, yeah, I'll take like, it. Yeah. I don't know about I don't know about big connections, but I definitely have people that can help you out. Oh, I got, I got the, connections. I got the right, connections, right directions. And I just yeah. need to work with the community to find the right tools and such, not like people, but I mean like programs that help me to kind of fork all this shit over and bridge between Pulse Chain and Dijon Chain and Base Chain and all that. You know, I, I really, I'm very, very yeah, man. inspired. I mean, I've Def seen some shit. Uh, see, I'll I've, send you some documents and then I'll, uh, I'll get you linked up with a couple of devs that can uh, point you in the right direction, my man. If you could, um, that would be amazing, bro. Because I need a front end developer. Really, that's a big part about it. Is getting this bridge front end put up, and then you know I know that. So a bridge, right? This is educational for y'all. I mean, we, we gotta bridge people on. We gotta have people understand what's going on here. A bridge is when you're. Let's say you have a token like Dai P Dai. So, if you want to bridge P Dai to another chain. You have to lock up that PDI in a smart contract. 
and then on this new chain you have to mint p die on this new chain so right now that's already an opportunity for somebody to mint p die on a new chain and you know we're not affecting the liquidity we're just we need to be able to lock this p die up some way somehow and we have to have a computer talk to these smart contracts in order to tell it to lock up this p die on pulse chain and then mint it out on the other side on this other chain so that's why i mean i think i have the back end sorted you know working with people i don't even i mean it is wild it is deep but i need a front end a front end is yeah, man, millions uh, of dollars right now we'll get you settled you got to crawl before you can walk um but uh 100%. yeah okay yeah i heard you, uh, I heard you. it's all good brother it's all good brother um uh, yeah bridges good old good old bridges yeah but uh Anyone else have, did anyone have any questions or anything that I was uh, chatting about? Where'd Spongy go? Spongy still there, chilling. Yeah, I'm just hanging out. All right, cool. Anyone else had anything? Let me know. Right on, I was all good. Chapter. I was. What else were we going over with before we were in the uh, hanging out in the other chat? Um, definitely had some whales over there that were uh, being pretty cool. Definitely think you know got some uh, other concepts and other things that are uh, all kind of spinning around, spinning about. Um, I know personally, just kind of hanging out. I'm out on the rig for now, so. Just wanted to spin this up and hang out for a little bit and just kind of have a chat. Um, so if anyone else is kind of speak, just let me know. Um, as I'm just chilling at the moment until something else kind of comes to mind or I'm asked a question. Yeah, we were talking about what country Richard Hart's going to walk up to and say, this is you now got a <laughs> pulse strength. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's going to be, that's, yeah, who knows, right? Just be able to have that kind of opportunity. He probably has, I mean, that's what I'm saying. He literally probably has so much money that he literally had to launch his own chain. And the SEC breathing down the uh, Ethereum's neck, it, you know, probably waiting for the top of that. Like, I mean, I think, what what did, what did Maria say as far as timing goes is when they assume that this could possibly reach its, uh... She said November, or he said November. <laughs> November. That's wild. And then we got the happening. You said around four twenty. Um, but remember, Bitcoin. he said he said it's going to reach the peg by November. So it's going to reach the dollar. A dollar. It's not going to stay there. It's gonna it's gonna right. take a long time to stabilize. But it's gonna be right. a lot of arbitrage opportunity, and that's why. Uh, just like you know, people are mentioning on the Pulse Chain Dark Web. Uh, you know, it's it's and Sunny and Hodonomics. They, uh, you know, it's it's important to you know not go too crazy with P die because there's other things in the ecosystem that can go above that 200x potential because of the right. arbitrage and all that stuff. The you know just uh, pe people I think, uh, tend to forget about Luna, but it's it's almost similar to Luna, but with a lot more dynamics that keep it a lot more stable over time. And that, that that's the thing about uh like maker dows whenever they're speaking about their new their new stable well it's not even stable coin like SDI will be their stable coin but their other token that is going to be arbitraged into and away from it's going to it's going to fluctuate from 75 cents to a dollar 25 and it's going to allow for you know 25x the amount of arbitrage that, that a regular psm a pri you know price stability module coin would so it's like literally going to help find its own value and uh i think you know pi is going to sit at the center of all that and but the reason it's probably not going to fluctuate as much is because of um well atropa you know doing what it needs to do and then you know s you know the s die ecosystem and then if if richard activates the vaults you know this will be like so multiple ways to help you know spread p die out and then also help it uh maintain uh near you know the near, the near dollar but yeah it's definitely gonna even whenever the first p die launched or the first die launched it like ran up to a dollar and down to 70 cents and did some wild stuff before it you know eventually found um fair value 
Yeah, so Ray, I don't know if you want to run through it again. We kind of talked about it the first basis, but sort of just like a high level summary of like what you found related to like um, you know, Hex Not, Winner's Mute, sort of like kind of like the rebrand that we going to happen and, you know, basically die. Well, the rebrand is going to be find its home on Pulse Chain. Like, does right, run right. through well, that? That's, I'm uh, curious that's... if anybody has any questions about that because we got cut off last time. Um, yeah, for people to ask so, questions. Yes, yeah. So MakerDAO, it's uh, they uh, they're running they're running in, they're running this thing called the end game, uh, where literally their end game is going to be uh, leaving Ethereum, uh, launching their own chain. Um, uh, it's going to be a stablecoin chain, but there's no, there's going to be no more Dai. It's going to be WP Dai WP USDC, and it's going to be literally a stablecoin chain, and the Dai that's on Ethereum will no longer be minted over there. It'll, it might still exist and be in circulation, but it won't really be under control by um, Maker as they are rebranding and changing. Their, they're, they're becoming more of a meme. That's what the, that's literally what Rune said. And they're taking their supply and multiplying it like 25,000 or 24,000 to one. So the only, the only places that Maker itself will still exist at that point will literally be Pulse Chain. And then uh, in ETH, it won't it won't be like a an ongoing thing. You'll still be able to I think you'll still be able to swap in and out of it for a certain period of time. But uh, then uh, yeah, then uh, in and of itself, then yeah, the, the end game itself is just Ben and Spark, uh, which is like Spark DAO, um, who's not act. They're, they're not truly affiliated with Maker DAO. They're just they're part of a sub DAO because they're just playing by the rules. Um, they're not, they have zero affiliation with them. They're just, they, you know, they got voted in through whales and, uh, through winter's mute. So winter's mute is a, uh, liquidity bootstrapping bot company by algorithmic trading company. That is, that was, and that is a part of Aves and maker DAO's, uh, um, consensus or DAO. Like they hold like a pretty large portion uh, and, uh, they uh, received around $25 million from MakerDAO uh, at one point in time, which um, coincidentally enough, they sacrificed around $20 million, $22 million in the Pulse chain. Um, and uh, you can literally just go and you can find that. You can find uh, all that, that they were like part of their, their DAO. They got voted on to help them bootstrap liquidity. They, you know, they became and they are one of the top trading um, liquidity you know, bot game companies in the, in the entire world, you know, reaching, you know, worth tens of billions of dollars. Um, so it seems like that that was a huge connection, you know, with all the arbitraging that we're seeing um, and uh, just the, the level of it, um, the, you know. So this seems, in my opinion, and from what I could tell, you know, they sacrificed millions of dollars. You know, Richard was holding a bunch of die at one point. It seems like him and... Uh, this guy that was a engineer at uh, MakerDAO, who who went by the name Hexanot, um, ended up uh, <clears throat> ended up being the person to, to actually first implement the plot price stability module, the PSM module for for Dai itself. Um, he helped. He he put he put the vote up one time, and they voted him down, and then he put the vote up again a little later on, and it ended up you know passing, and you know. He was, you know, he was hexing out back then, and he's still hexing out to this day. And uh, it seems like him and Richard, I'm sure, built a, had some sort of relationship because, in my opinion, Spark itself was designed and built to scale die uh, for the exact reasons of launching and uh, being a, being able to uh, bridge on to uh, new chains. And then the fact that, you know, die itself could not be lint, lint out and uh which is what which is one reason why die was always so protected because it was a 150 percent collateralized uh, ratio so if you wanted to take a flash loan out against it you would get 66 cents on the dollar so but with s die it's like literally the exact opposite you can literally take 20x 20x leverage against it um uh and since spark has launched and since you know, it's only been about eight months since they've actually, not even eight months since they've been really live, live. You know, they've, you know, have netted around a billion dollars 
but they, they had a total value locked of around six billion and have pushed MakerDAO into becoming one of the most uh, highest grossing protocols uh, this year by far. Um, and I, with Blast as well, Blast was designed pretty much for a very fast and efficient way to move on and off chains. And literally both of them combined, like Maker talks about it, their, their goal is to scale um, DAI to 100 billion um, DAI by the end of like 2025. So it just seems it's, I don't know if you can't, if it's just a coincidence that he's a hexagon. It's a coincidence that he used to work at MakerDAO. It's a coincidence that he used to actually, you know, design stablecoin mechanics and that he's now, he's now came up with a method that literally you can, that has turned stablecoin ecosystems into money printers because you can, you with Morph Labs, you can take your ETH, wrap it as collateral and you can make APY on it. Then you can take your wrapped ETH while you're still holding it, use it to swap it into DAI, to SDAI, especially if you're the owner of the protocol, then you literally have your wrapped stake ETH and your SDAI making right now 10% a piece in uh, collateral and collateral, uh, um, not collateral and APY. So like right now, I mean, Richard could be possibly making around 40 million a year while still being able to deploy assets. Um, um, because of, because of that setup and that mechanic, which is literally a money pr a money printer with with on top of the PSN model, which is a you know the auto automatic market maker that just front runs buyers and sellers based on if they're coming to buy or sell, it pushes the price up or down before they come in, and then the the stablecoin uh, company or whatever it is stablecoin market maker pretty much just isn't able to net profit um, the whole way through and. It, actually coming out with a new type of model um that is a fixed interest rate which i believe what's it called it's like a deco and something else that they're going to be using which is like a 30 percent fixed interest rate for holding it because there's such a high fluctuation in value up and down with the with their product with the maker protocol um that um just just holding it i believe said that they pay up to like up to 25 percent apy because I believe that the arbitrage that they get from the fluctuation goes to the actual, the stakers or the holders of the, uh, of the, of the actual protocol because it fluctuates, you know, upwards of 50% up and down. So that's kind of the narrative there is that, yeah, they, uh, they hold voting and then they, you know, I even saw that, you know, winners mute, winners mute themselves and Rune, uh, a lot of people got mad at Rune, who's the owner of MakerDAO because he would like some of these votes that came in to do certain things would literally happen overnight with with spark <laughs> and spark had no reason or had no rhyme or reason to have to uh, to do what they did to pay 10 percent to maker and 10 percent to abe and to get voted in as a, a sub dial like they didn't have to pay them just because they copied or were utilizing their protocols i think it was just a way to uh, bootstrap community and bootstrap um, ideas because of him having the affiliation that he once had with Maker and uh, also it's clear that that protocol and pieces of that protocol were running on Pulse Chain long before people even knew what Spark was um, such as the SDI such as the, uh, uh, the the collateralization with different tokens uh, with what we saw uh, what we've seen in that in that one vault um, so it's like some of this stuff that has been working and been sitting and been tested over here, like very early on. And, uh, yeah, it was, that was definitely here working and before anyone knew about it. Right. And then, you know, the copying of some contracts and cop, not some contracts, yes, uh, copying some contracts, forcefully not copying others and then leaving some transactions out, some transaction history out, um, and I think he did that because it would have inflated the supply of, uh, of the stable coins too much. So he literally cut it off at a certain point to make sure that the supply, there wouldn't be more than, more than so much of the supply floating around inside the, uh, ecosystem for people to either come back and get their hands on or, you know, come back and, uh, you know, exploit another protocol. So yeah, that's the rundown on that end. I mean, he literally said he knew. So I think, you know, the fact that we have Maria and this dude, um, it's pretty wild. <laughs> like, it seems like the, in my opinion, it seems like it's a bunch of benevolent, uh, 
benevolent people that are, you know, either friends or not. They're all working together for the same goal. And uh, if they weren't friends or if they weren't working together at some point in time, it seems like they uh, they see each other now and they see what they see what each other are doing, and they're all, you know making moves. I mean, we saw Richards, you know, he wouldn't have dropped all that die into a protocol if he didn't trust it. He wouldn't have dumped four hundred million dollars worth of die into S die unless he trusted the protocol. And I think that he plays a vital role, if not the biggest role, into why that protocol was designed. I think that, you know, he probably helped design it, um, in my opinion, with him. Um, he'll never say that. Uh I think he'll let the other, the younger guy, uh, Sam, ride the glory. Um, but, you know, speaks volumes whenever he buys anything. When Richard buys anything, you need to be paying attention to it, in my opinion, right? So the fact that he was, you know, he dumped all of the value that he retained, you know, in the sacrifice into that protocol. Um, and then, you know, swapped it out and then is still holding some of it that we can't see is a, uh, should be eye-opening to, to what uh, what could possibly happen. I think he's also doing it so he can farm the uh, airdrop uh, for um, because there is an airdrop happening, and the more you interact with the protocol, the bigger of an airdrop you get, and then technically, instead of them just showing up over here, he could vote for them to come over here, which would just be, quote-unquote, a decentralized manner. But um, we, I don't, in my opinion, we don't even need, we don't necessarily need Spark to be here because we do have a working protocol. We would just need a front end built and we would need SDI to get above a dollar um, for it to make sense. I mean, right now it's still, it's working like a regular contract. It sells for a dollar. Uh, I don't know, it buys for a dollar, but when you sell it, it sells for less than a dollar. Um, so it's, it hasn't quite reached parity on the, on that end, but there is a the Spark XYZ, swap, a Spark Swap XYZ, which I have no idea if they're affiliated with them or not. They are onboarding people with EDI directly into um, SDI. And it seems to be to help, um, again, another benevolent uh, factor in this is that they're pushing value into it. I mean, the other pairs are just, there's no, really no liquidity in it. Main, the main liquidity and as the uh, EDI S die pair at the moment, but there is a little pair between E die and P die. I mean, I'm sorry, S die and P die, and there definitely was a, a transaction like cut like a couple of years ago on ETH, and then a transaction on I believe on Pulse that was like a fifty, a fifty, a fifty swap, like a fifty token swap, where it worked out just like it didn't matter what the value was; it was just fifty to fifty one direction. Um, it just works it's just the way the contract works so if he can't release the contract too early in my opinion because it would still assume that the token's a dollar when it's not so it mint you a dollar of s die but you're not giving it a dollar of die so i think we have that's one of the one of the reasons we might be waiting as well um for him to be able to deploy the s die that he has and then probably wrap the uh wrap the ethereum bridge that over or wrap it and leave it there because of Morph Labs for the uh, passive income. Wrap it, leave it, bring, bring, and then bring 400 million of S die over um, just to get things started. I guess that's uh, well, at least that's the value that we know that he has. And then you know, I saw him swapping into uh, or, uh, value was going into some uh, some bots and being being deployed towards finance a couple days ago uh, when I was tracking it on Arkham. It's hard to tell if, like, you know, can it always say it's from this wallet or that wallet, but, it, you know, when it's $2 million coming from one way or another and the value of that one wallet went from $40 million to $80 million, you know, relatively quickly. Uh, so it seems like he's uh, putting some of the funds to use and uh, by sucking value out of not Ethereum, but uh, other exchanges and other chains. Uh, because I think he already realizes how much value he might be taking from, you know, the Ethereum protocol to begin with. And I, I think he's always said that to us is his goal was not to not to harm Ethereum, but to uh, just be able to help um, become, help it become less congested and more widely adopted uh, ecosystem. But yeah. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I can go on rants forever. I <laughs> 
I know the one thing we were talking about, um, a good deal, was um, how he's able to, or some of these transactions aren't showing up, or some of these values aren't showing up in, in wallets. Did you want to talk about that more? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just clear that, that that's, well, like I said, the one that, the, that's because Ether scan kind of sucks, number one. And number two, it might be because he's not holding that on. He might not be holding the S guy on EtherScan. It might be. It could be in. Uh, it could be on another chain. It could be in a smart contract that doesn't recognize it. Uh, it could be wrapped, and it could be set inside of an NFT where he could set the value to zero, which we've seen uh, seen someone do that's uh, affiliated with with certain things. So it's like something is recognizing the value. The same thing with like the the explorer that I use today was showing me value where the other one on, on either scan uh, just, just wasn't, right? Like the, the value isn't on pulse, right? The, everything might just be zero tokens across the board for whatever reason with no transactions when that value should have been copied over. If he copied the entire chain and then came to it, you know, <laughs> there's value over there, there's transactions over there in these wallets, but for whatever reason, there's certain wallets that, he, that were, that certain wallets were copied for a reason and there's certain laws that he avoided for a reason. So in my opinion, if he saw that they were quote unquote phishing scams and he copied them, I think that, he, that there's a reason behind it. And if there's you know a reason that something isn't labeled something and he didn't copy it, there's a reason for it. So that's just uh, that's what I found by, by looking into it. And also, you know, EtherScan sucks in and of itself. <laughs> And we know Paul Scan needs a little bit of a little bit of work, but I mean, you can do just you can you can get enough value out of just as long as you can get the contract address over and plug it into it, plug it in, and uh, you know, do a little bit of clicking around. You can definitely see some some very unique things that have been occurring between you know the Blast Blast protocol Maker protocol and you know um, Ave. Um, inside just like different aspects you know <laughs> whether it might whether it's nfts or liquidity providing or you know the copy liquidity you know that should have been in this contract but seemingly has seemingly has been moved over to another area and uh then yeah, having to hunt down the value in and of itself you know can be a little bit of a task but um it's i don't think he's like again i think the whole reason is it's not like he's hiding it from people he just doesn't it's it's almost like it's a a preordained or a preset or a pre-told or a preconditioned thing to where, you know, I don't want to have to dump one billion dollars of liquidity out of Ethereum. I want to be able to, you know, bootstrap them and help them get some liquidity back and make sure that whenever I make that move, you know, if it's not affecting them, even though it shouldn't anyway, because it's not showing up, which is, you know, oddly enough, which is weird enough anyway, that it wouldn't, you know, I've seen some, some other things that, that still show up over there that uh, technically or like a, like bridge hacks and things like that that were would still show the value at least, um, but yeah, he's there's, there's definitely some rhyme and reason, and I believe some uh, not necessarily partnerships, but you know, understanding that what was what's going to happen anyway, and what the, the you know the ultimate plan is to do with some of that funds, and uh, you know, I think them and Maker, you know, clearly have a goal in mind. And a plan, they've had a plan in mind, and I believe that's why Maker changed their whole their whole game plan all of a sudden, and went to and wanted to you know turn it into a ETH, ETH proof of work fork uh, with this like a proof of work proof of stake hybrid with um, Atlas as an AI technology, and I believe that that is also going to play a role on Pulse Chain. I, I think it's already playing a role inside the bots. We just haven't been told anything about it. But I do think that AI and things like that are already playing their role inside the, the winner's mute and the, uh, that sort of ecosystem. I know you can already kind of use Atlas because like Spark, Spark is using that Atlas protocol to decide if uh, a protocol or a community or whatever is uh, you know, strong enough for them to you know, launch the protocol on or to um, provide assistance within the protocol, uh, the lending protocol. Like you know, you can literally plug it in, and it'll run like a like a back test on certain things through you know, the use of AI. So I know that that's right. I think it's called Atlas, I believe. 
So it seems like, you know, either they trusted us really early on or, you know, they already knew what the plan was um, since the get-go. And I don't know if this was a preordained thing, uh, but it seems like they have a plan and they're they're sticking to it. And uh, it's uh, it's never, of course, it's going to take time. But uh, I know that there's a lot of people within this ecosystem that are kind of struggling to, you know, not just understand kind of like why he would do one thing or the other. And in my opinion, it just makes sense to, to attempt to, rather than just continue dumping millions of dollars into the chart, that's just going to get eaten up and uh, taken away. He could, uh, this way he can literally make, make a passive income, um, not have to dump and then still be able to mint value out of the, uh, the tokens that he holds in a lot of, and in, in a lot of other protocols. Um, which would, you know, bootstrap all the, you know, bootstrap a lot of other communities' liquidity pools to bring them over. And in my opinion, when it's when we're at the dollar, it's that's just the beginning because that's whenever people will really realize that they have value over here. And then, you know, with the incentive token doing what it needs to do, I, you know, which you know, when it finds value, the pools become very, very juicy to start providing liquidity for. So it's kind of like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy, so to speak. It's just, you know, it's Richard Hart. He always has to deal with FUD and, you know, everything else that comes along with it. But usually that just brings together a, a, a tighter, stronger, smarter group of people that just believe in him more. And then, you know, that little piece that, you know, from a, from a small little spark can come, a, can come a great fire, in my opinion. And that's why I've always tried my, you know, while everything else has been going on, I've always done sat around and done my research and tried to do what I could to where I could, you know, speak this, um, this narrative the best I possibly could because I believe in it so, you know, pretty deeply and at least so I can provide the information that I have so someone can go out and research this and just and prove me wrong, you know, so they can come back and just say, hey, no, this is what I found, this is what's going on and, you know, let's go back and look at it some more. So, I mean, without that, you know, without a little debate, you know, that's why me and Sponge always go back and forth with each other. That's uh, it's just the, the point of, the, of being able to find the actual truth of what's going on. But that's also why we've derived and gotten to where we are right now, because we went back and forth so long and uh, until it almost felt like it was pretty solid, a uh, pretty solid theory. And it's still adapting and changing, but, you know, whether it went to blockchain itself, like you'll know, just it doesn't really lie. But it can be, it can be deceived, but it doesn't lie. I also think it's important to remember that, you know, who has the most incentive to peg die? I mean, Richard Hart is probably one of the, if not the biggest holder of die. So basically doubles back. Maker, and <laughs> Maker's right behind him too, so yeah. him and Maker would be incentivized, yeah. Yeah, not to mention, I thought it was interesting, and I don't know how many people know this, but we were talking about how, what was it, 2019? I don't remember what year it was, but back when Dai had some stability issues and RH came in and sort of saved the peg. When was that? Well, he did it with USDC, too. So, whenever, not too long ago, I think that was just like a year and a half ago, whenever... USDC got decorrelated and he threw forty million dollars at the chart, and actually, I think it was like thirty or forty million. He ended up making like five or six, seven million. But I, I think he, he, I'm sure there was other times that he did the same uh, to to die itself. But since since it's so heavily backed by USDC, uh, the smart the smartest move would not to be thrown into die because you know it would have just been eaten up the other way around. So if you want to provide liquidity into something, you throw it on the opposite end and then it arbs over. So that's why he would have bought USDC because then it would have been arbed over pro properly into DAI because that was, you know, so that's what he did. And he actually made a profitable trade. And I, that, again, I think that was just a, because this, it's like, a, it just seems like that was a, a friendly thing to do. And, you know, obviously it was a, to all protect his bags. Um, I'm not sure that uh, there definitely was other times die itself got depegged, but not whenever he had that much value <laughs> writing on it um, to where it was, you know, but yeah, he definitely was part of helping it reach, uh, get back to where it needed to be. And now what I 
how what a fucking G. And there was people in the VC at the time dumping. I remember that just dumping the bottom of it because everyone was just panicking, and the curve pulls were becoming heavily incentivized one way or the other. So it was a uh, it was becoming a madhouse because of you know it was a. Uh, and I think that's you know a reason they got worried, and they still might be worried about all the uh, all the debt that uh, was incurred or incurred over time by stables backed by fiat because when you back something by fiat and you mint a liquidity pool you're minting two tokens out of thin air so you're literally putting two dollars of fake value technically on the chain because um, you have to have one end or the other I guess you still I guess you could mint it with a dollar and back it with something else um, so at the very you know very worst case scenario you're minting half of the value of a liquidity pool out of thin air and over time, that builds up a lot of debt, which is why we saw and have seen die start burning die, and a lot of it. And uh, I also believe that's why he burnt his die on Ethereum um, when he did. You know, probably at the worst possible time, but it was uh, I, I believe for more more of a reason than we could uh, than we know. Good stuff. Do anyone have any questions, guys? Man, it's quite a few people in here. Raise your hand and feel free to speak. Or if y'all want me to touch on something else, or just let me know. Um, definitely appreciate everyone popping in and showing some support. I believe that the, this community, uh, the PDI community, and the Tropa and that ecosystem is by far the strongest community on Pulse Chain. And I think. Uh, we're going to help carry the narrative on our backs if we have to. And at the end of the day, everything else will ride with us. So <laughs> it's unfortunate that some people look at it the way that they do. I think it's a massive opportunity for people to, to thrive and shine and grow communities and grow your network. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why. I, uh, what do you think about the uh, you... Atropa dev doxing themselves? I mean, technically, that was they bullish, did, man. But, you know, the video and shit. Yeah, I think it's massively bullish. We saw what happened at the price. It happened to be on the one of the days that we uh, we had planned on having a, a chat too. So it was pretty exciting that we, there was just a lot of a lot of zooming going around that day. A lot of uh, you could just you could feel the the bull market in the air for the first time, and a little bit on Pulse Chain that uh, you know th that everything was kind of falling into place. And you know, I know a lot of people doxing and things like that is, is a huge is a huge thing for some people and uh and you can tell that he's a rocket scientist dude you can tell that he's a very smart dude and uh he's pretty much exactly what i expected he would be which is yeah, i want to i want to get some smart. Uh, behind the scenes information about how that meeting went because um, i saw one clip that was pretty interesting about how what what's what's his real name james i'm just gonna keep on going for him for james um Going forward with saying how there's a lot of uh, cohesion between Ethereum and Pulse Chain, and that there's a lot of big players from ETH uh, currently right. working with. It was a little cryptic. I don't know exactly what they meant by that, but right. well, it would just make sense though, because like you have two stores next to each other that technically should be the same value, and um, over a long enough period of time, and depending on the whales going one direction or the other, it would be. So it would just make sense for them to uh, for them to look after each other, so to speak. Because we definitely see cohesion happening. It's just you know how quickly things will, you know quickly things move. The one beautiful thing about Pulse, though, is the fact that we will and can be. Um, running independent of um the, yeah i mean usually we run with it right because bitcoin but bonded liquidity wise our liquidity is bonded to stable coins right it's not bonded heavily to btc like eth is you know btc and eth are probably the heaviest liquidity pair that there is to exist across any exchanges and then uh you know the fact that we're tied to you know stable coins could potentially give us an, a you know a way to move independently of the market, which could be a bad thing sometimes and a good thing. But I think 
it's ultimately going to be a good thing. It's just going to take time for people to uh, to catch the narrative, to understand what's going on, and to um, just continue to DCA because it's you know it doesn't take a lot of money for this whole ecosystem to you know to do what it need, you know to pump or you know find value and the way that we're being the way that it's being built in a decentralized mechanic through layered liquidity from the very bottom and then having dead liquidity ends kind of where it's not really traded if it's just the R bots like Ethereum didn't have decentralized exchanges for a while you know they didn't have bonded liquidity you know right at the very beginning of their chain like this is something that we're setting up as a foundation of the entire ecosystem is this bonded liquidity pairing and then you have a trope on top of that and then you have like yeah, um, Sunny and PPC, you know, these other people that are, you know, tying coins together, liquidity together, taking liquidity, taking a liquidity token and pairing it with a liquidity token and then pairing it out with the liquidity token and then pairing it out with Pulse and the R bots will still trade it. Like, so it's just, you know, you're just, there's a lot of unique things that we're seeing happen over here that we just haven't seen, that I've never seen on other chains, definitely didn't see on BSCs. And I just, you know, debt, and I don't think they had the ability to even be able to do that on ETH. And I think we're, so we're setting a standard that, that's probably going to be brought ran by a lot of other ecosystems. They're all, they're, I think everyone, especially with CCIP coming out, then that will be the, the new narrative, the new play will be, you know, forking your own chain or, you know, launching your own chain um, and just having that ability. I think this time it's just, you know, it's not a six month front run. It's not a, Two year front run, I think Richard Hart has front run the market by, you know, four years. So I think it's going to take a little bit for people to catch on to what's going on, but I believe that uh, people will catch on. And ultimately, it's going to be because the foundation that this community's laid out and the narratives that have, uh, that will have been achieved by the time that rolls around. to add but uh i just want to say thank you for hosting a space with some coherent conversation and decent language yeah man i appreciate you stopping there stopping by dude yeah i'm uh definitely <laughs> um uh, definitely here to try to do my best to be an actual sane individual and onboard people that uh maybe haven't heard or been around before and you know, can't do that when you're just acting a, acting like a madman. But yeah, trying to set the standard. I know that you, uh, you yourself have watched you take care of your community and assist. It's, it's a blessing to know that, you know, there are people in this space that are out here to look out for each other. So, and that is just the truth. So, with that being said, gentlemen, I guess we're going to go ahead and tie it in and tie it down. And I'm gonna, I'll pop back in the Pulse Chain Chain chat and I'll be over there hanging out but i uh definitely appreciate y'all popping on and like i said we'll probably still be running these you know try to still run these like once a week and you know keep things going i know sometimes i get chopped up when i'm speaking but you know, as long as i have someone like a uh, pulse who can keep keep me talking i can i can talk for days but yeah appreciate y'all guys chiming in and uh see you all soon have a good night